Today, I'm helping Charlie navigate a difficult situation with the IRS. It is so common to find yourself with an IRS issue and often even more difficult to figure out who you can trust. I'm Jasmine DeLucci, tax attorney, CPA, and enrolled agent. So I'm going to go through how I would approach his situation to both minimize his tax and then also provide clear resolution to this issue that he's had since 2020. So if you're dealing with your own IRS tax challenges or you just want to know, hey, how do I avoid doing this as a business owner? This episode's for you. Let's dive in. Okay, Charlie. So if you could kind of go through what happened. So um, I've had a LLC since 2017. Okay. Uh, it was me and a partner. And so we stayed two, uh, two owners until 2019. Then in January 2020, work picked up really, really quickly, very, okay. very fast. So the first quarter of, of 2020, there was a lot of money coming in and um, overnight I had to hire five people. So at that point, I, I started um, um, uh, figuring it out and researching what I had to do, you know, with employees and came, came across 941, 940s and making deposits and all of that. Had you signed up with a payroll company or you were kind of figuring out payroll on your own? Yes, I, w I was using Excel okay. for, for <laughs> payroll uh, as an engineer. Calculations were on point. Everything <laughs> was like really, really pretty mm -hmm. on Excel. Mm -hmm. um, being on my own and using Excel and mm -hmm. trying to use QuickBooks and, you know, sell and do marketing and do all of that. Amidst all of that, uh, once I got a payroll company and they were handling it, uh, I kind of forgot of what was behind me, right? So all of that in the beginning of COVID, that was in a drawer somewhere forms and everything. Throughout 2021, the payroll company was doing its job and I assumed everything was taken care of. And then end of 2021, um, the, the business wasn't doing well. As a matter of fact, we never recovered from, from COVID. It was excellent before COVID. And then after COVID, I was just injecting money, you know, savings and everything went towards the business and nothing really happened. No revenue came out of it. It seems to be that my case is not that complicated. We're talking about uh, three quarters in which I had issues, mm -hmm. two quarters that I didn't file and one quarter that wasn't fully paid. A lot of miscommunication and waiting on, on the IRS, which built up you know, all those penalties and interest and all. So the, the debt got inflated, really, mm -hmm. really inflated. And those 941 Xs that I, that I filed um, which were sizable as well. The, the amount of credit that, mm -hmm. that I'm supposed to get is also sizable. So in the end, the debt is not that much when, when you start taking into consideration the credits from, from those quarters mm -hmm. that I had to amend the, the 941s. So what is the total debt that you're expecting after the credits? So based on, on, on my calculations, again, based on my Excel calculations mm -hmm. and even my, my interest calculation formulas and everything, it should be around 21000 Okay. IRS claims 47000 which I understand why. When you it, say twenty one, that's including interest and penalties and the employer side of the payroll tax. Yes. Because they were closed and because of COVID and all that the backlog, um, something that could have been resolved in 2022 when I found out that I, I hadn't filed those those first two, two, two to three quarters, right, of 2020. It could have been resolved in 2022. It took all this time for them to be ready to talk to me because until then, until then was over the phone with, oh, you owe 40,000. Oh, no, you owe 24. Oh, no, you owe, owe 10 or some calls like you don't know anything. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a good sign. <laughs> you know, I hope, I I hope she's right. I've got like a phrase that I like to say or like I put it out as a tweet, which is if you want like five different answers, just like call the IRS five different times. And then as far as when you were talking to potential people to represent you, for sure, a bare minimum when people are calling on the tax lien list, I know that they, they're like savage salespeople from all sorts of companies. Um, what were prices you were hearing? $8,000. Okay. So when I compared, okay, $8,000 with $21,000, which I assume is the debt, that's mm. almost half of it, right? Yeah. So it, it was hard. But if I had to do it all over again, I would start with the CPA. That, that's what a CPA is for, right? So. Yeah. So yeah, a few takeaways, because always it's like, what, what should have been done differently? This is actually why I always recommend staying with like a large payroll provider. So granted, some people don't like 
hearing me say that, but um, because they'll be like, can you do my payroll? And so we, we actually as a firm don't even do payroll because we work on so many cases like this, not to say we do a bad job on payroll, but it's just the smallest thing that's off creates a huge ripple effect and creates so many issues that we just want it to be pristine and we want it to be where I always say like a big pay- payroll provider because sometimes people will small- sign up with small ones and actually there's a whole scheme that that people will do where if you're with, of course, a bad provider, they take your payroll taxes and like we just discussed in this in this conversation, if you don't even file the 941, you won't know that you owe. So there's a whole scheme that certain scam artists will run where they pretend like they're filing your payroll they take all the money they're supposed to give to the irs and then of course they're long gone by the time you hear from the irs so i'm just always like very conservative i'm like you want your payroll filed and you want it with a company that literally cannot do anything to you um so that's where i'm very conservative on payroll filings i would have just said day one adp paychecks just like get it on lock not to say they don't make mistakes but Mm -hmm. it it's much more process oriented then at that point it would have been good, obviously, to probably hire representation earlier, kind of like what you spoke to. I think a lot of people a lot of people view what we provide, like attorneys, accountants, as expertise, and obviously that's an element of it, but part of it is peace of mind, mm-hmm. speed, convenience. Um, so obviously you always have to evaluate, like, what is that worth to you? And, and it's hard to evaluate because you don't also always know how long it's going to take <laughs> to work with the IRS. It's easy to maybe under-index for the time it's going to take because you think, well, I'll just give the IRS a call and we'll be good. Uh, next thing you know, you spent 20 hours on the phone with them. Yes. <laughs> and then you're like, this wasn't what I was thinking. Um And that's part of like the point of doing all these conversations where other people can see them because it's really scary. I mean, literally the number of people that will will get have this issue is is just it'll keep happening every single day because so many different things can happen with business where the first thing that goes, it seems like, is payroll tax a lot of times. And you think, oh, well, I was only 10 days late. And then you're like, what's this huge penalty that just showed up? And then all of a sudden you're like, well, now because of the penalty, I can't make payroll tax. And then so, you know what I mean? Like it's just a ripple effect. But let's talk about what to do. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, so first off, it's really significant that your business is not still operating. That's a really important factor. I'd have a different recommendation if your business was still operating, but we know that the business is not still operating. Um, it also sounds like basically there's no, are there any bank accounts with business money, like bank accounts with the business EIN with money in them? No. Okay. So there's no assets that, right. no like assets they can levy. Um, what about any... Just any assets? No. Okay. Nothing. So nothing. (laughs) Okay. So that's very significant. So next is what's the point of a CDP hearing, right? Because that's basically where you're at and kind of why we made sure to get this conversation in before the CDP hearing so you can know what to expect. Um, The way you can view it is it's really to like resolve this issue on behalf of the business specifically, right? So that's separate from like you as an individual. It's really like on behalf of the business. So had you told me, well... It's an operating business. We've got lots of money in the bank account. We've got all these assets. I would say, okay, you know, we need to obviously resolve this on behalf of the business so the business can continue. Mm-hmm. Now, instead, what we've got is a business that doesn't really, that doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't operate. So um, step one is to make sure all the 941s are processed. It sounds like you've you've given them to the RO, which is good, Mm -hmm. but then getting your transcripts, (laughs) either you'll need to do it or someone will need to. Um, Any representation that is licensed can put POA on file, power of attorney on file, and pull them pretty easily. Um, Alternatively, you could obviously decide to call the IRS and do it as well. Next step is, it sounds like you're familiar, right? You're going to be personally assessed for the trust fund, right? So we keep saying this word trust fund, but what does it mean? It is, that's basically what it is. It's the amount that you're going to be personally responsible for, which is usually about two thirds of the tax. Wait for them to do the personal assessment and then pay that. So again, don't pay. (laughs) CDP hearing, you can still meet with them. But like the main thing at this point is making sure the 941s are processed. I'm not sure what else that CDP hearing will accomplish because we don't want to set up a payment plan for the business for you to be paying penalties and interest and all this stuff that's not going to carry over to personal. Mm -hmm. And then they will go ahead and assess the trust fund You can go ahead and either pay the trust fund or you can choose to do an installment agreement. And at the balance that it's at, it it should be straightforward for you to set up yourself. 
Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's, that sounds good. <laughs> so if you found this episode helpful, be sure to leave a comment below since I continue to learn from your comments as far as what you actually want to see from me. And as always, subscribe to the channel for actual tax law from a tax attorney. And if you'd like to apply for my help for free while helping so many others get the transparency when it comes to tax law and also working with the IRS, just like Charlie did, click the link below in the description to apply for a chance to be on the Tax Leverage Podcast.